What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another daily video for you guys today. This one's a rarity. It's a transfer video. It's the first time I've done this on my channel in a while. But there's actually news worth talking about. So we're going to delve into it in this video. We're going to talk about Fikayo Tomori and rumours linking him with a move away to Italy. As well as to a potential Premier League club. And we're going to talk about the chance of him going permanently or going on loan for the season. We're also going to talk about Chelsea jumping into the race for Dejot Upper Meccano from RB Leipzig. Leipzig. And we're also going to talk about recent rumours linking Avram Grant with a return to Chelsea and whether this is a good move for the club or whether this is actually heaping more pressure on Frank Lampard. We're going to delve into all of this and more in this video so if you guys haven't done so already please hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, press the bell notification button as well because we are about 300 or so subs away from 20k and you know the roads to 20k has been long, it's taken ages but we are nearly there so if you guys haven't pressed the subscribe button It'll be a really nice start to my 2021, 20, so please press that button if you guys haven't done so already. And let's go straight into the transfer rumours of the day. First thing we're going to talk about is Upper Meccano, and clubs have been circling around the defender for a while. He's been a very, very well-known prospect for RB Leipzig, and his performances have only continued to improve as well. There were talks of him leaving the club earlier on in the summer of 2020. There was heavy rumours linking him to clubs like Arsenal, but eventually he ended up signing a new contract till 2023. And usually that would be enough to push clubs away from him, at, for the very least, for the next year or two. But part of that contract includes a clause a release clause of 40 million euros that starts from the end of the season and that obviously is going to prick the ears up of a lot of different clubs because he is a defender that a lot of clubs have been looking for and for Chelsea we've had quiet rumors linking us to him for a while but Chelsea now seem to be joining the race there's been plenty of other clubs involved Bayern Munich Manchester City as as a few Bayern Munich obviously is clear favorites but recent sources are now stating that Chelsea have joined the race to sign up and Meccano and are now attempting to lure the defender away from Bayern Munich who still look like clear favourites and it does make sense that Bayern Munich are favourites it's the same league which lessens the adjustment to a new club they're also massively clear as the best team in the world by a mile so there'll always be a club that other players aspire to play for as we've seen ourselves when we trying to kept Hudson, when we've been trying to keep Hudson Odoi at the club for the last few years but it is still early doors one of Frank Lampard's strengths was his pulling power with Hakim Ziyech, Kai Havertz, Timo Werner all speaking about Frank Lampard's ability to persuade them and to make them more interested in the Chelsea project. Whether he is still at the club or not is a completely different story that we will talk about later on in this video, but that's one strength that we can look at going to this. Especially as well, the release clause, £40 million for a player of that potential and a player of his quality right now. Like People are saying he's rash. Cool. He is still a rash defender. He still has a long ways to go, but at, he's only 21 years old. Like, think about like this. We have another ex-prospect. We have another big prospect from the German league in Kai Havertz, 21 years old. Are we going to say that he's too young and too inexperienced to be playing for Chelsea? No. Granted, he's also a generational talent as well, but Upper Meccano is a big prospect and he's very versatile. He's strong in the air as well as a decent passer. Again, I'm not going to say he's absolutely amazing because he still has areas of his game that he needs, that he needs to improve on. He's still a rash player as well. But He's for forty million pounds. Are you going to say no to that to a player of his quality as well? Imagine him next to prime Malang Sar or prime Xavier Mbiamba or prime Fakayo Tomori. That's also the other side of the table as well, where we have to think. We don't necessarily need to go for a defender, but this is a quality defender at a very favourable price that if we're going to think of it in terms of a business point of view, you could sell him for massive profit if things didn't work out, or if he didn't end up getting in over some of our other youth prospects. But for 40 million, he's a great option. It also isn't the end of the world if we don't get him. If Bayern Munich ends up taking him, it really is what it is. We've already spoken about the other prospects that we have. At least one or two of them should be making it as a proper world-class defender, as one of the best in the league, if we're serious about Le Coven being as good as it is. We also have plenty of other options that we could go for. Canate, Sven Botman, they're all they're all other favourites that we could get if Upper Meccano isn't there as an option for us. But for 40 million, not a bad deal for us. I've seen a lot of people slating the move, saying we're signing the next Antonio Ruiz. 
Rudiger or the next Kurt Zuma. Sorry, guys, this guy is levels above Kurt Zuma even at this certain point right now. Let's not sit and start nitpicking over certain defenders. Ree's only 21 years old. There is plenty ways for him to go in terms of his development. We're not going to sit here and just judge him and say that he's hit his ceiling and that's it. There's still a quality player there. Him being coached by Thiago Silva for a season as well. Imagine the experience that that would give to him. The only thing that I would say is that's the only thing that he is lacking. Leadership. Maybe being around Thiago Silva for a season or two would do it. I know a lot of people are saying Thiago Silva will probably be washed by next season. But I really find that hard to believe. I've already spoken numerous amount of times on this channel about his quality and about how he takes care of himself. How his recovery is very similar to Cristiano Ronaldo's. And how PSG fans always spoke about his longevity and that he was potentially going to be the next Maldini in terms of his longevity before you lot clip me and just say I've just called Thiago Silva the next Maldini at 36 years of age. But it's in terms of his longevity. So I think we could get another year out of Thiago Silva. You might be pushing to get a third year maybe, but it's also not too far out the ordinary in terms of this player. So I would back that as well. So him next to Thiago Silva potentially, I mean that is a mouth-watering prospect. But you guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let let me know if you guys want to see us make a serious push towards up in Meccano. And let's go straight on to our next story. Our second story, and this is about Avram Grant. Now, Avram Grant is potentially being rumoured to join Chelsea's new backroom staff. And people are saying this is a move to give the backroom staff a bit more experience. Someone who understands what it's like to manage Chelsea. And someone who can give Frank a helping hand. But... I don't know, I, I hear that, and even saying it, it just sounds like a big old load of BS. This just sounds like a contingency plan for if Frank Lampard gets sacked. And I understand Gr Avram Grant does have experience, if you want to use that very loosely in terms of experience. He managed us for about eight months, took us to two finals, but um, I mean, experience, are, are we really going to call that experience? I mean, I'm going to put his managerial history right up on the screen now, and are you going to tell me that this is the experience that is going to turn Chelsea back round from our bad run of form? Yeah, I don't think so. Like, it was common knowledge that in the dressing room back in the day, they didn't really have much respect for him. They were more or less were able to manage themselves, and that was what took us through, for the most part, the 7 08 season. The amount of leaders that we had, your John Terry's, your Frank Lampard's, your Frank Lampard's, your Didier Drogba's as well. And this one, it, it doesn't make sense. As, as a managerial option, this, this isn't going to be something that massively helps the club. He more or less left the leaders to it and just worked as a man manager for the most time he was with us. This it just screams, Roman wants another ear in the dressing room. This is exactly the same thing that we saw in the 07-08 season when he got brought in as an ear to the dressing room and eventually ends up taking over as interim manager. And the cards are falling in the exact same place. He is going to be one of Roman's men just telling him the ins and outs of what's happening in the dressing room. And yeah, this sounds like a bit of move. This sounds like a move that puts a lot more pressure on Frank Lampard. This also isn't the biggest vote of confidence that he could want. This screams the start of the 0708 season. And we all know what happened a few months into the 0708 season. Granted, Frank Lampard still needs to turn things around. He still needs to get the results by himself, but this isn't going to be the best move, and this isn't going to be the one that gives him the most confidence as well. You lot, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But to me, this one made sense in 2007 when we had players that could coach themselves and could motivate the team themselves. But in this one, where's the leaders? We've got Thiago Silva who's working on his coaching badges. We have... Other than that, is, is there anybody else? Like Azpilicueta as well, Jorginho, but it's not the same. It's nowhere near the same as it was back in 07 08. So I don't see how this could actually have a positive influence on the squad. If anything, this is just going to cause a bit more disharmony, in my opinion. But you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I'm going to move on to our last bit of news, and that is Fikayo Tomori. Fikayo Tomori is looking for a loan out of the club. Frank Lampard said the reason why he didn't start the last game against Morecambe was because there was a potential potential loan deal that being offered for him and apparently it was looking like AC Milan but AC Milan are leaning more towards a permanent deal for the centre back and I already know I don't want that I've spoken about Fikayo Tomori's potential I did want to see him get more game time this season but same time I understand why he didn't as well he was meant to be going on loan to West Ham he said no at the 11th hour that kind of throws a massive spanner into Frank Lampard's plans. And I understand the Bulls are wanting to stay and fight for your spot in the squad. 
But he didn't really have a starting spot in the squad anyway, so I don't really get it. It's just stagnated his career by about four months. Newcastle and Leeds United both want him on loan. I would really love to see him at Leeds United, which sounds absolutely terrible as a Chelsea fan. But their style of play is a lot more similar to Newcastle's. Newcastle, I don't think he'd be learning the right things. Leeds United, what he'd learn there would assimilate a lot more to what Frank Lampard's style of play would be. So I would rather him go to Leeds United than Newcastle. Not AC Milan, though, if they want to permanent deal if that was a, a temporary deal that would be absolutely excellent because that will give him the experience of playing for another big club as well regularly that will give him a lot more responsibility to deal with but I'd rather him go for Leeds United out the three clubs or at the very least stay in the Premier League for Premier League experience but guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below until then, that is the end of Transfer Daily until, well, I say Transfer Daily, Transfer until I see, Transfer Daily until I see some more news. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below on any of the comments that I've already mentioned. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I've said. And until then, take care and up the chill.